Today, we're going to be doing a special upgrade on this Mac Plus. It's always been a, a thought of mine if somebody could have developed a internal Blue SCSI for this thing. As you know, these don't have room for a hard drive on the Mac Pluses. They do have an external SCSI connector, so that's how we have the wonderful Blue SCSI attached to the back, and it's fantastic. But like I said, it, it kind of gets in the way because it's always hanging out the back. So somebody actually uh, created uh, my YouTube friend, John. You might know him better as John, the big bad biologist. He's been working on this project for quite a while. And a couple streams ago, he actually installed it on his Mac Plus. And it's pretty neat. So basically this is it right here. Uh, he was kind enough to send me one of his extra boards and all the little bits that go with it so I can do this. So anyway, what this basically does is you have to take this SCSI chip off the main board, transplant it on this, and then you have to add some little special connectors and risers on the other board, move a few components around. And this literally just snaps on the old SCSI slot there, and there you go. You've got an internal blue SCSI. And the wonderful thing about it is, is you get to use the external SCSI connector. So you actually have an internal one and an external one. You just change the SCSI ID numbers. But more about that in a minute. I'd like to take the time to thank our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is an innovator in many areas. Way back from their humble beginnings, they keep growing and adding new products and services. Whether it's your personal project or a big corporation, PCBWay can scale up any project, whether it's PC boards of any type, CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, design services, prototyping of any type for your specialized needs. There seems to be really no limit to what they can do. So I hope you give PCBWay a try and see what they can do for you. Well, we have the uh, board out of the machine here. And uh, you can see this is the uh, rominator that sits on the sockets of the old ROM. We had to do some conversion on that. Uh, this is from Koba. If you want to order one of these, I'll put a link in the description. Pretty cool upgrade. You can change the startup sounds. You have a ROM disk. You have all kinds of cool stuff on this that you can do on this, in addition to the blue SCSI. So anyway, uh, it's attached to three pins on the processor here. So we want to be very careful. This is maxed out on memory. It's got the four meg of memory in it. So this chip here is what we're going to have to remove. This is the SCSI chip. And we'll have to uh, basically uh, wick all the excess solder off the back, take a hot air station and loosen it up and then pull it right off. Okay, so we got our SCSI chip removed. And we have the new header pins put in there. So now we're going to start putting the header pins on the board. And here's the chip. It took a lot to get it off. We had to use a lot of heat to get that chip off of there. Hopefully it's okay. I need to clean the pins and straighten them a little bit. But So we're going to start uh, assembling it. Okay, so uh, we got those in. And now I'm working on the board here. And so we got these header pins that go in the clips there. So now we're going to be ready to put the SCSI chip on here. Pretty cool. Okay, so we got it all together here. It all fits in there. And it's a pretty cool little board. So we're going to test this first with the external SCSI. We know that works okay. Then we'll do this one here. All right, so we're going to try this now. We've got everything hooked up in here. Now the board is not all the way in here. It's just connected enough to where I can test it. So hopefully uh, this will work. Now it, if everything goes well, it'll go into the rominator. And the way you activate the rominator is you hold down the R key at boot up, then it goes into the rominator. But if you don't do anything, then the rominator will kind of go away and then it goes and looks for the SCSI. Now I didn't hook up the SCSI uh, cable for the uh, floppy drive. I just want to see if this works. So let me power it up, and you're going to hear the fans running on it. 
Everything's all hooked up to it here. So let's try it out. Now the startup sounds derominator. It's, I made it sound like a quadra. And you're going to get the uh, screen scrolling down on it. And that noise you hear is the fans. This keeps it really cool when you get the case on it. Especially on the analog side, it really pushes the air up out of the case. Now it's going into the rominator right there. Now, like I said, I don't have a keyboard attached to it. And you'll see that start up there. So now it's going to go and look for the blue SCSI. There it is. Blue SCSI right there. Nice. It's seeing it. Excellent. I am so glad. I was so worried. I had to unsolder the SCSI connector because I had it on wrong. And that was a nightmare to get that thing unsoldered off and then resoldered again. But I'm glad it's working. So now our next thing is we're going to modify the frame on this so that way we can. Um, see uh get that thing to slide in or like it should okay so uh we got this all in but we cannot get the board all the way in properly it doesn't clip in here because the scuzzy chip is sitting up a little too high so it's above this frame so i'm gonna have to mod the frame a little bit to get this to sit down in there properly so i don't have this side of the board actually in the uh, track here so it needs to clip in a little bit and that's because the SCSI chip is running into that but it does work but let's do the mod and uh, we'll go from there okay so what we're gonna do is we need to section this a little bit more here so I marked where the blue SCSI chip is right there those little marks so basically we're going to continue this line over to here. Then we're going to run it down here. And then we're going to run this one down through here. And we're just going to get rid of this little section right here. And then what that'll do is when we slide that down in there, then we won't hang up on anything and the, the SCSI chip will be in free space here. Uh, this won't affect it structurally because we're gonna, this is all structural here, so we're gonna be on the other side of it here. And again, we're not, uh, there's already an opening here, so we're just gonna basically make this opening bigger. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so we got the frame out of it here, and we're gonna it'll be a lot easier to cut it now because we don't have to worry about bumping any components. Now the fans are here, but that's that's not gonna bother them, so. That's why I made a connector so we can connect it really easy. So let me uh, do that little conversion here. Okay, so we got our mod complete. So what I did is I took out uh, this little tab that's here. I just took that whole section out and I also dremeled this little section out here too. So now when we have this sitting in a machine, uh, I have my marks here too, and that's where the SCSI chip was. And I went just a little bit beyond the mark, of the, or rather, I just went a little bit beyond the width of the SCSI chip. So really the SCSI chip's right about there. So we should clear, and that way it'll sit all the way down. The board will go in our, no problem. So yeah, so we're going to put this back together, and we'll see how it fits. Okay, so we got the frame all back in, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to hook up the, uh, the logic board here, and we'll see how that works. And we should have plenty of room now to slide this in. So I'm going to make sure this is pushed down all the way. 
And let's give it a go. See what happens. So let's see here. But let's see. Yeah, try something here. Just put this down right like this here. We'll stick that cable in there. Put this board up in here like so. Okay. And maybe now I got it in position there. So now what I'll do is I'll take and I'll pull the side out a little bit and get that board pushed in there. Let's see if we can do that. I wonder how much this frame will bend. Let me slide up, up a little bit more here. So I have to deal with two connectors here. There we go. Okay, good. So now, okay, get this slid in here very carefully. Now, again, I have to hold this thing back just a little bit so we get it started. All right, so let's get it in. Oops, get out of the way there. Oh, look at that. I can clip the board in now. Very good. Let's take a look here. Let me put this, I put this on with Velcro instead of the sticky tape. We'll make this all pretty here in a minute. But anyway, excellent. So that fits in there perfectly. And you can see right here. And you can see now this is the board that has a SCSI chip on it. Now you can't remove the board once it's in here, but that's fine. But see now it clears the frame. It's just right there, it fits right in that notch there. So there's plenty of clearance. So that's great, that is perfect. So yeah, so now what we do is we're just gonna hook the, uh, now we can hook the uh, floppy cable back up on it here. Cause I couldn't do that easily before. And now we can hook the floppy cable back up for the floppy drive. We get everything all plugged back in here. Okay, so that's all down in there. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and hook this up here. Yeah, we got the notch here, so we'll turn it this way here. So that's pin one over here. So we'll get it all lined up here. And we'll get that all slid on there. There we go. And again, that's just gonna lay right on here and it's not gonna short out or anything because this is all plastic. So we're, we're good on that. It'll lay in there just like that. Now we can take the uh, floppy connector here and we'll we'll plug that in here. Get that plugged in. Maybe. Come on, get in. There we go. Okay, got that in. So that's in. And of course, uh, let's see. Uh, I should have ran that through my cable here. Hold on. Here, let's see. Let's pull it out of here. We'll do it this way. Got to get the... Uh, this here, so we can plug the fans back in here. Get it plugged in there, okay. Now we can plug the fans back in. Red on red, black on black. There we go, just make sure we're good. So yeah, that's the red on that side, red on that side, so we don't have it reversed, so that's good. So those are plugged back in. And then we just need to plug our video cable back in. And that's gonna go right here. Sneak it into these wires here. And let me just take a look down here. We'll get this plugged back in. Cause this just, that just clears this plug here. There, get this plugged in. 
There we go, that's plugged in. So everything is plugged in. The board is seated down there real good. Okay, all right, so if I did everything right, it should power up. But the nice thing about it is, is now the board fits in there and it's a great. And then also, uh, John said, you know, one of the capacitors, you move on one side or both of them. So I elected to do uh, the capacitors. I just put them both on the bottom there. So that way we get plenty of clearance there. So yeah, so now we're going to uh, power this up. Now this is the uh, TTL board that Ron from Ron's Computer Videos came up with. And of course the first one I had, uh, there was an issue with it and, it and it blew the board up, but it didn't hurt the machine. So what I'm gonna do is I have a DB9 connector. But what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna get the DB, DB9 connector. I have another one of these and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify it. So I'll have the connector on the inside and then I'm gonna have Ron's little board thing here. It takes a regular CR2029 battery, CR39 battery. And that way we can still have power. So we want to use the big battery because the connector, that way when the case is on it, you can put the back of the uh, case cover on it, which will look nice and tidy there. But yeah, so that's my next uh, modification. I just have to wait until I get that uh, Tech Electric board because that's what this is going to plug into so we can go right to HDMI. It's going to be pretty cool. All right, so let's um, and just kind of get this out of the way here. Now, I got it all taped up so it doesn't short out on anything. And this is a, uh, you know, this just sits right in there just like that. It's not going to go anywhere. So, yeah, I think it's, for what all we have in there, it's pretty tidy. So let's... Uh, we're gonna power this up again. I'm gonna turn this a little bit and make sure that our blue SCSI is working. So let's plug it in and we will power it on. Oops. There we go. I had to adjust the fan there. It got moved a little bit there. Now oh, we're good. There we go. Yeah. Got moved a little bit when I was uh, grinding on the cover there. So, okay, so the blue skizzy is getting power. It's going to go to the rominator first. There we go. And again, there's no keyboard connected. So I cannot select the rominator. So it gives me that little custom icon that I put on there. So now it's booting off the, the blue SCSI. And when this case is uh, enclosed, you can really feel the air coming up. Uh, it's not as noisy with the cases on it. But there we go, we got a cursor. That's always a good sign. Again, there's no mouse or keyboard hooked up to it. And there we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'll go and get the keyboard, mouse, and we'll run, and we'll run Snooper on it and see if everything is okay. So I'll be back in a minute. And also uh, you can see the voltage here. I have uh, this nice little macometer that Will from KMac Vintage, uh, he sells these. I will put a link in this video and you can pick one of these up. They're very great for these older Macs. You plug it right into the uh, SCSI port back here and I just the voltage was a little high actually because I've recapped this uh, analog board and uh, it was about 12.3 so I backed it off a little bit so our voltages are looking good positive 12.1 5.01 5 volt and negative uh, 12.3 so we're we're within tolerance there so uh, pretty cool little gadget I suggest you get one uh, go to his coffee site on his uh, channel and pick yourself up some. And uh, also, the neat little thing too on his is uh, when you get you can get the little dongle, so you can get an AD, ADB cable, and that way you can do this remotely. So you would plug this in, plug the ADB cable into that, 
you hear that sound plug and you plug the ADD, ABD cable into that and then you can hold it you don't have to get around the back of the machine so you can it's, it's a very handy little gadget to have very valuable tool so this will tell you right away too so if you get a bad power supply if if you adjust the voltage and you're not getting any more voltage out of it and it's way off of calibration like the 12 volts is really high the 5 volts are really low then that tells you right there that you need to recap the analog board but anyway yeah so voltages are rock solid excellent so we have a uh, keyboard and mouse attached to it and sorry for the screen resolution there this does that on this camera it's not syncing up real good with it but anyway you can see there's the rominator which that's what we're in now and we have the blue scuzzy so very nice so what i'm going to do is um, i'm going to get out of that and let's get into the blue scuzzy here Okay, and we're going to get into, uh, let's see, let's get into our extras here. And we're going to run uh, Snooper, we'll run version 2.2 here. And we'll open it up here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to let it run a test, make sure that everything is okay. So it's loading it up here. And so we're going to do a logic test here. So it's going to check different things. It's going to check the RAM. It's going to check the clock, the SCSI port, all that stuff. So let's go ahead and we'll start it and we'll just let it do its thing here. All the test is passed for the SCSI, thank goodness. There's no modem attached to it so that's why it's making that funny noise. It'll test bad because there's no modem hooked to it. Alright, let's see. Checking the CPU. It just it does a whole bunch of different little tests here. There's no ADB on this machine, so it won't pass that. There's no floating point unit on this machine either. All right, so it passed Snooper okay. All right, so it's all working. Excellent. So there you have it. It's working perfectly. It all fits in there like it should now, since we did that case mod. And actually, I'm going to show you one more time here. Let me unplug everything. And whenever you are working on one of these, when you have the cover off, be very, very careful. You can really get injured. So anyway, so this frame is all put back together. Everything is all plugged back in. The fans are plugged back in. You see the board here. We did the mod. We put the capacitors on this side. It all fits down in there perfectly now. And if I wanted to get it out, I just unplug the blue SCSI cable from the blue SCSI side. And I can take and just basically uh, slide this out to a certain point. I just spread this cover out and get it right in. So yeah, so it worked out really good. So if you want to do one of these modifications on your Mac Plus, it is easy to put the board together if you have the uh, soldering station it works much easier because you will need a hot air station to get the chip off the logic board to put on the board conversion that he has for it in there that's probably the most difficult thing to do i was so afraid i was going to cook that chip because i had to get it really hot to get that thing off the board. It took a while to get it. That was my hardest thing in the whole project was to get that off the main logic board and on John's board here. But anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a great, uh, it's a great, fantastic thing. Uh, like I said, if you change the SCSI ID number, you can have an external, another blue SCSI plugged into here. 
You also have the internal one. So you would have two SCSI drives. And actually, this, this machine would have three because it has a ROM disk on it with the ROMinator. So that's just adding a lot of functionality to these old classic machines. And like I said, my next thing is to get this TTL board. It's, it's electrically, it's hooked up. It just needs to be installed and the uh, proper connector put on here on this battery cover. And I have an old battery cover I'm gonna mod. And then that way uh, we'll have Ron's battery CR39 battery on there, so that'll work out good. So I hope you liked this video. It was it was a lot of fun, but it was a lot of challenges getting that thing in there. But it's very gratifying to have the internal blue SCSI. It's really neat. Makes it really clean looking when the case is on it. So please like and subscribe and click that notification bell. We're on Twitter, we're on Mastodon, and we're on MeWe. You can find me there on those social networks. So until next time, you guys have a great week, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.